Hello everyone and welcome back to the series Evolution of Computers. Today we are in the part 3, that is the final part. So without any further ado, let's get to learning. Coming to the topics that we are going to cover in this session, from the evolution of computers, today we are going to cover the third generation and the fourth generation. So let's begin with the third generation. Now before directly diving into the third generation of computers, let's have a quick recap of the evolution of computers. Now we know in the mechanical era which spanned from the 1600s till early 1940s, the computers were made mechanically. Then in first generation, due to the advent of electricity, the vacuum tubes became the main component. Moving forward during the second generation, the vacuum tubes which were used in the first generation of computers got replaced due to the advent of transistors. Then comes the third generation. Now in the third generation of computers which spanned from the late 1950s or early 1960s till the early 1970s, it marked a significant transition from the previous reliance on vacuum tubes of first generation and the transistors of second generation. The advent of integrated circuits or ICs played a pivotal role in defining the third generation of computers. Apart from size and space efficiency, reliability and improved performance, the most interesting factor of the ICs was its miniaturization. The ICs combined multiple transistors, which are basically the fundamental components of ICs, resistors, capacitors and other components on a single semiconductor chip. Notice, at one end we have got a notch. This is the positive indexing notch for insertion into the circuit board. The pin to the left of it is the pin for the power supply. Now initially, this body which we can see on the screen used to be made up of ceramics. Later, it got replaced with plastic packagings. Underneath this plastic packaging, we have got connecting wires and at the heart of that, a silicon chip is placed. Now the pins which are visible on the screen are referred to as terminal pins, serving as the interface ends for the connecting wires housed inside the plastic case. Now I just told you the most important factors of integrated circuits is its miniaturization. Let me explain what I mean by that using the IC for AND GET. Now the IC for AND gear is numbered as 7408 and notice this is the positive indexing notch. The pin to the left of it is actually used for power supply and the pin which is diagonally opposite to it is used for ground. Now if you remember the transistor implementation of AND gate in our previous session, for a single AND gate we use two transistor switches. On the other hand, in this IC of AND gate, as you can see, we have incorporated four two input AND gates. So clearly, at least eight transistors have been integrated in this particular integrated circuit. Integrations like this are known as small scale integration. And the same can be noted for OR and NOT ICs. Observe. In case of NOT integrated circuit, which is numbered as 7404, we have got 6 NOT gates. And if you remember the transistor implementation of NOT gate from our previous session, in case of NOT gate implementation, we use only a single transistor. Therefore, in this particular integrated circuit, we at least have 6 transistors implementing all these NOT gates. Similarly for OR gate, just like AND, here also we have got four two input gates and if you remember, OR gates are also implemented using two transistors at least. So, in this particular IC, we have at least eight transistors. Additionally, the IC for OR is numbered as 7432. Notice, all these ICs have positive indexing notches where the pins left to them are used for the power supply. 
So clearly, with the advent of integrated circuits, miniaturization became a reality in true sense. Let's now talk about the various milestones of third generation of computers. In 1964, IBM introduced its IBM System 360, which was a mainframe computer, and it marked the advancement in computing offering a compatible family of machines with varying capabilities to meet diverse business needs. Then in 1969, United States Department of Defense established the first wide area packet switch network called ARPANET or Advanced Research Project Agency Network. It was also the first computer network to implement the TCP IP protocol do remember, this network was not publicly accessible. So that was all about the third generation of computers. Let's now focus on the fourth generation of computers. Now coming to the fourth generation of computers, the era started from 1970s, considered to be existing till the present date. In the 1970s, microprocessors became widely available leading to the development of personal computers. Specifically in 1971, with the invention of Intel's 4004 microprocessors, the journey of microprocessors began. However, this microprocessor was never used in a computer. It was mainly used in programmable calculators. Then in 1980s, graphical user interfaces or GUIs and the mouse are introduced. Before 1980s, all the computers which were in use, the developers used to communicate them using terminals, only using keyboard as the input devices. During 1980s, due to the advent of graphical user interfaces, the usage of mouse came into the picture, making the computers user-friendly. Then in 1990s, the successor of ARPANET, that is the World Wide Web, became accessible to the public. Then began the millennium, that is 2000s till present day. During this time period, we have witnessed the advances in mobile computing, cloud computing and the rise of smartphones and tablets. And in recent times, with the advent of artificial intelligence, we are getting into the next generation, that is the fifth generation. So that's all about the fourth generation of computers. So in this session, we covered the third generation of computers and the fourth generation of computers. All right, people, that will be all for this session. I hope the journey of the evolution of computers was informative to you. In the next session, we are going to learn about the integration techniques of integrated circuits. So I hope to see you in the next one. Thank you all for watching.